high percent chance if you're contested to really end up winning the game doing well to have that much damage happen earlier on to you in the game and turn it into such a good performance that's just huge we'll see that pattern rolling in over the swell game format again and again the contestion is once again you can keep fighting you have a lot of room to work with 12 games at this point in the game though people want to maybe avoid fights with the good on surge they're just trying to get in yanis the deal no o'reilly kind of their situation 500 damage above in this situation all you want to do is just launch pad get out and go that's exactly what they do have to be careful though every other trio might be active looking here come the edits out onto Janus. he's going to dodge a few shots so the first trio to move so not going to get targeted immediately the walk doesn't have to be careful because riding that same line that's where people start to track the patterns of flight get some easy bullets down meanwhile box fight is still going on a spanish trio up against finale and robot and axe force and man, these guys are in trouble again yeah, and we saw beforehand when they were in trouble due to the surge, this time well above the surge, despite only having one elimination, but getting caught on the rotation. And you talked about the statistics there in terms of being contested early on, 5% chance of winning a match if you're contested. Well, if you lose a member of your trio before the fifth zone, not a single team has managed to win a game if you have lost a trio member before the fifth zone. That's over the course of this entire season. So the importance of staying up, not being in those clutch situations. Yes, we talk about Fortnite being the wonder and the ability for an individual player to go off. But at the end of the day, teamwork makes the dream work. And that's what will get you that ax of champions across all three of you. As you can see, Kondanko desperately trying to push forward. They will end up get above just 69 bouncing just on the other side of the barrier. You're gonna feel good about that for right now, but Noah Riley going down to splash in the feed, keeping an eye on the top left-hand corner as Storm Surge is driving this action. They are able to disengage a little bit here, but currently at least two trios are being hammered by that 25 damage every five seconds. Oh, great open up from Condi there to be able to trade on the side. Now he's got to disengage because they're coming fast and quick. He only has the wooden build. So despite disengaging back into the previous built metal, because he's re-editing it, it's not that effective. He's trying to pop a medkit on the other side, but it'll only get him 11 effective HP. Clinberry doing his best to try and force him off, but Zeku, Etsy, and Slove just brute force battering ram to path. They said, don't mind if we do we're going right by find some room to launch pad and take this guy's good rotation from them and where the action doesn't stop as we swing on over Smash Milwaukee trying to find the Irish Drew on the other side is the deal who's dropped down to a solo we're inside the 50 players so storms are just turned off and we're closing in on those cascading placement points five points given out right now Neil will miss out on any additional ones as he gets just blasted in the back flanked from the back left unfortunate for him Zendaya also left a little bit behind inside the zone this trio's not going to be up for the moment. And Alex all the way on the backside next to Snazy, Nate, Skite, Scram. He's going to be a solo, actually. I would assume this team was doing so well. We were tuning with them or tuning in with them. They were looking good on Surge. Everything was fine. But it seems that every team that has a plan right now, their blueprints are getting ripped apart. I want to see Seti. I want to see Seti, Cami, and Teak. Dude, they are doing nothing but lighting up the feet. They've been playing amazingly so far. And we've seen them yet again picking up eliminations. Where are they in the priority position right now? Because... And like, despite having the legendary pump, he has 11 builds. We're in the cascading placement points. So one point for each one of the trios that goes down. He has the moving zone pulling towards him. But we've known that the trios who are together on the low ground, that's where the action is. And look how well they're trying to get to the front side of the zone, child. That's the bottom left-hand corner there. Yeah, they are the first place team as well, really pushing forward their lead right above them. Second place, Fasoki, CR, Aqua. They're moving too. We're tuning in with Nate, Stacy, Skite. 18 points overall. Really want to see that first second place on the left side, though. Aqua and, and, and Cami just up and down, back and forth, height and low ground. They're in their positions again. It might be a mimic of game number one, but no mountains in the way this time. No mountains in the way right now, but it is still a slight change in verticality. And with some of the old builds, there's going to be a little bit more difficult to navigate, and it makes the priority position that much more important. We're going to swing on board. My prediction here, Nebs and Pink Stompy going down early. We saw that bit a pair of eliminations over here. I believe in the Pink Supremacy. The lad has been on a tear recently, and Nebs looking for some great shots, trying to provide the glue. Also have some med kits for some cheeky plays and long survival, so should be looking to just play for whatever place and points they can with the priority position. But speaking of priority position, up on the high ground, UK Supremacy it is. I know Levin's pumping his fist right now. Michael, Verox, Astro, SMG raining shots down on the rest of the lobby. They have control for now, but Zone is bouncing. The Aqua's right below him, right below that. Steady Kami Teak, who had a little bit of a fight at second height. They lose it, go down a little bit, just regain and kind of reassess what there is to do to make sure this game's going to go well, too. 500 above Surge. These guys should be fine. Analyst is a solo. Pick it up Karma, so he's still active inside this whole feed. This lobby has been torn apart fast, though. Seven zone. We're already down to 12 teams, and that Surge is gone. Esty finally taken out by Jose. 
past that, nothing really happening. If you listen really quick, I barely hear any AR shots. It's just shotguns back and forth on the backside of the zone. Sadi Kami Teak are in such a good spot again, all the way at the front. Nate popping off, taking out Andalex. Nazi finally going down, and then Nate gets traded by Xenolith as well. Teak, Kami, and Sadi are just waiting for the game to come to them. This is excellent, and they're actually defending their own. Oh, no, though, new visitors on the front side. This looks like desperation, but look at Teak. What a beautiful layer change. Going straight down, looks back to maybe get Kami and Sadi involved as well. Everyone's going down above him. Sadi actually gets a trade inside that fight, and Teak is still moving on by himself. He set up a pinch now. Sadi and Kami are behind him. Teak lands the first shot. They got this man trapped in the box. They own everything, and Teak is the one actually dealing the damage and getting the Elam. It's huge, but now they're lost in the zone. It's fast Roki that they take out. That's second place, and they're still moving forward. Super strong, but no. Because of that delay, Teak gets taken out, and now he has to let his teammates carry that torch. There's Kami, who's still up on his feet doing everything he can the question to what's in the box it was fast strokey but a first place trio goes down not after eight eliminations and a top seven placement aqua still up on his feet but up on the high ground we have the spaniards raining down shots the uk was forced out you can see the elimination scale ticking over as aqua is able to get the knock on the hellfire confirmation comes to Tripper and up on his feet picking up flow not enough. the oxy raining shots down picking up sean vp and astro smg also ends up getting scram it's a three v2 v1 aqua being the one astro smg and barracks on the low ground hip to hip Trying to run it out. Aqua, though, gets a little bit of room. Also has six eliminations. So points to take it through at 152. That is a huge trade, but he's running out of space. He's not worried about the damage. He's worried about his HP in the zone on the side. 25 builds, but it doesn't matter if you don't have a spot to place them. Trying to get through. He finds some of his own builds. Will get an edit. Just have the chance to drop down some good box going forward, but a little too much opens it up in a top three performance to go along with eight eliminations now it comes down to a three v two the spanish trio was sitting on my vort 13 eliminations 52 points right now second place trying to win it out child can they do it they make it look like a mini game playing whack-a-mole right now just waiting for these heads to pop up look at how high they are i didn't even understand how far in the sky this fight was going astro though has a chance low ground individualized fight he loses it close the lights turn it all off right now the spaniards are here to play crow up top with the last shot the ox and jose are there with the second game victory royale Turn the lights off, carry me home. Nana Crow Jose taking it away. Brilliantly done, game number two. But I mean, the funnel of eliminations, the amount of points, and that's kind of something we hinted at Mitro and his team being capable of. But let's face it, any team in EU at this point, if you get high ground, you get the right set of circumstances, you can rock off those 15, 16, 17 eliminations of the victory round games, and that's chunky points. Absolutely. Steady Kami Teak, though, had so many Elims. Aqua was there with a chunk of the change as well. If there was attack for this game. It seemed like struggle for every other team from the mid to the end. So it ended slightly earlier. I want to see exactly what the desk has to say about that one. A massive jump start here in game number two of the finals. It's only the first day of competition. We're already seeing a 15 elimination victory royale. Levin. This team has just said, listen, we want that Axe of Champions, and we're not going to make this easy for you if you're trying to take it from us. No, that, that's a crazy game. A 60-point game is huge, Wild. especially early on, right? You know, being able to sort of put yourself ahead of things is, is incredibly valuable. I, I, I was so impressed by what I saw from them. You know, I, I'll talk about, you know, the UK boys. I know Sundown mentioned I'd be pumping my fist. Look, when I saw them on height, when I'm looking at the height hold, I wasn't too confident. I wasn't too confident. I didn't think they'd be able to maintain it. But where they did impress me, and I'll give them their props, typically with height teams, when they don't keep height, they fall apart. These guys being able to stay together, stay compact as long as they did, get second place is a huge difference because some of the best teams we have in the region don't have that ability, aka Aqua's team, right? We've seen that a couple of times. So, you know, really good stuff from these guys as well. Yeah, and I want to actually harp on about Darius Crow and Jose for a second there because 15 eliminations is obviously mad, but remember in the previous game, they were the first team out. They were 33rd going, well, 32nd in this one, going down to Kami State Teak off spawn instantly. This game, they switched up the drop spot. They went over to that west side, up to Fort Crump, but the castle split, as some may call it, and dominated from there on out. So a mature decision. There was a lot of beef going on on Twitter. We're landing Kami split, and then, you know, game two, they said we're not doing that anymore. And clearly, yeah. it's a good decision to take a free drop spot like this.
I love that. The adapt, like adapting in that moment is absolutely crucial. Guys, let's take a look at the differences between game number one and number two, because we're seeing kind of like you're alluding to, Reese. There has just been some changes that have happened. Yeah, I want to specifically focus on Believer Beach in this fight between, obviously, we've, we, you know, we looked at this in game number one. We kind of missed this in game number two. This is game number one straight away. Notice on the left-hand side here, you got Janice and Arian Lee, 50-15 a gun on the roof. Guess who gets it? Arian Lee, because they end up winning. And on this kind of hotel, look, it's a 2v1 right here. As you see, Noah's on this, and then he's also against Mitro, and at the same time, Milan up there, while Vadil down here by himself. So they basically, the strategy here was just a 50-50, the east side of this drop, which is really, really common. So they just basically, it goes down to like, who's the better drops, who has the better aim. And as you notice, Arian Lee already has two eliminations. And basically, Mitro, sorry, Milan here, just finishes up the final elimination because they were outnumbered, had the better drops. But this is game number two, and I want to want to show you the difference here. Arian Lee's team's done the same thing. They've landed on this full east side, but notice the adaptation from Noah going down on the south side, Janice landing a bit further back, and then also, you can't see it, but up here, we've got Vadil over here. So look at the loot that they have all of this and more in comparison just to a couple little houses the the hotel even though it's a power precision now i want to take one more part i think noah has taken the camper in camper van very very seriously